Well, good morning, everybody. We'll get started here with our project in about four minutes. I'm still waking up with my coffee. <laughs> and we're going to have a fun day. I think it'll take about four hours is what I think it'll take to make this. We'll see. <clears throat> I'm just going to type into our chat window. Good morning. Good morning, quilters. Oops. <clears throat> Good morning, Nancy. How are you this morning? Hey, Puffy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, before we get started, you can say hi to everybody. Yes, you can say hi to everybody. Yes, you're a good dog. Yes, you are. You're a good doggy. All righty. Yes. <laughs> oh, you, you're in a kissy mood this morning. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who's a good boy? Yes. Good morning, SP. Quit. Be good. You can be good. Yes, you're a good dog. Okay. Okay. Yes, you can see yourself on the TV. I know. Okay. There you go. Good boy. Oh, he has to get his camera time in as well. <laughs> All righty. Oh, he, he found his rat baby, so I'm about to throw it. Come here. Come here. This is his favorite toy. This is his rat baby. Get your baby. There you go. All right. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> Good morning, Rebecca. I'm going to go over cutting instructions one more time and all that fun stuff. Let's see, we have about two more minutes and we'll get started with the fun. Just reading the posts over here. My monitor is right over here so I can see the chat window. And I'm going to move it a little bit closer. There we go. I'll be able to see that a little bit better during all of this. Good morning, Janelle. Oh, from Boise. I've been to Boise. I was in Boise, Idaho about three or four years ago, I think it was now. I went there to do an AccuQuilt presentation at one of the local retailers there. <clears throat> but good morning, everybody. Welcome to our very first Let's Make a Quilt. This is going to be a series of live, live instructional videos and just a way to get together socialize, have some fun, and sew together as well. All that fun stuff. But so my concept for this, what I'm going to, the quilt top that I am going to make today is one that I'm going to quilt this week so it's ready by Christmas. It's our new Christmas quilt. I've been busy all year making quilts for other people and I finally got caught up on my long arming. But in the, for this this scenario, it's going to be an easy one. A layer cake is also called a 10 inch charm square. They come in packages similar to this. So this is 10 inches square. There's 42 squares in it. I'm also using a matching jelly roll. Those are two and a half inch wide strips cut across the width of the fabric. And there's 40 in here. So there's 42 
and 40. Okay. And that's all you really need to make this if you'll make your quilt five blocks by six blocks. This would all that you would need. I'm going to make a king size quilt, however. So I'm using two and two, and I cheated. I'm also using two charm squares because in the corners of the blocks, we're gonna have a two and a half inch square. Each charm square, these are five inches by five inches, this will equal four two and a half inch squares. You can cut your two and a half inch squares. If you just have this, it still works. You can cut your two and a half inch squares out of your leftover strips and your leftover uh, 10 inch charm layer cake squares. I'm gonna show you how to cut that. The only thing you have to cut, if you're gonna use this method, all you do is cut it into four equal pieces. Cut it down the center and down the center this way. And what you end up with are those. You get four of those out of each one. Okay. I've already got all of those cut. Because I'm making, mine is going to actually be seven blocks by seven blocks or 49 blocks. Because we have a really large king size bed. So for instance, here's a charm square, the 10 inch square. And I'm using two of the pink, so some of it's directional, so I'll have to be a little bit careful <laughs> how I place some of the fabric. But there's 13 different fabrics in that collection, and there's this is one of them. And then I'm going to put around this one zebra print, like so. So this, I'm going to swap my camera. So here's my char here's what I'm talking about. Here's my charm square right here, okay? Now I already cut I cut these you can get four of these from one strip out of the jelly roll. All you have to do is cut them every 10 inches. Okay? And I'm going to show how how I do exactly what I'm talking about here. But this is how I will sew them on. First, I'll sew one onto each side. Then I will make two units like so. And what I'm going to do for my corner squares, you can mix them up, but I am going to use the same fabric as this center right here. But you don't, you can mix it up if this will be your quilt, do it any way you want to. So there's the two and a half inch squares cut from um, a strip. And here we go. Let me get those laid down. You'll see what the, the... So first you would have to sew these three pieces together here. Okay. Once those three are sewn together, and these three pieces are sewn together, and these three pieces are sewn together, hold on, and then I just had to sew this unit to this side, this unit to this side, and I would end up with a 13 and a half inch block. right there like so. That would just be one block. <coughs> so I'm actually gonna have enough fabric to make two quilt tops since I'm using two layer cakes. I use two jelly rolls and I also went a little above and beyond. You don't have to do this, but I also used two of the charm packs that matched. What I did, ended up doing, I cut all of my little corner squares right here, my two and a half by two and a half out of this. I'll have one king size quilt and one throw quilt by using two, pa two of these, two, two, and two. 
and then I also have enough for binding. So now to cut this, to cut these strips, let me get these back in order. What I do when I'm cutting, I lay everything out. I have a lot of acrylic rulers. So here's all of my, these are the, in my big quilt, my king size quilt top, I'm only using the prints out of the Tula Pink line works. I'm not using the bold black and white geometrics. That's what I'm saving for my second quilt top out of those packs. And, but for this one, I'm using these eight fabrics. That's all I'm using. So <clears throat> what I did out of this, I pulled out the eight fabrics and I had to make sure I have 49 total squares for the size of quilt that I'm making. Is that right? Let me think. No, I had to, have, I had to cut up 49 of these because one, one charm square would go to one block for the four corners. And if you cut it like that, that gives you one for each corner. So it took 49 five inch squares cut up. It took 49 layer cake squares for the blocks. And it took 49 jelly roll strips 49 strips total for my king size quilt. And I'm going to cut these up. I still have these. I have three strips of this zebra. Three or four. I have three. I have three more of these to cut up. And that's what I'm going to do right now. And once I get that done, I'm going to look at the chat window and we'll, I'll answer any questions. Okay. So another way I kept organized for this here on this 12 by 12 inch ruler I've got, this is where I cut yesterday. I layered all the uh, layer cakes together that I had and I mixed and matched my fabrics, how I wanted them to frame each one. So I'll have like six of each one of these there'll be seven of this one to get up to that 49. So there's eight different fabrics. I'm using six squares per fabric. That was 48. I added an extra one of these to make it 49. All six blocks, like for this one right here with the zebra and this print, what I have down here, they will all be, I will piece them exactly the same is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So all I'm going to do to cut these up, here are the fold lines. And if you don't have the charm square, you get to cut, you'll use up all your fabric by cutting this up. Okay, let me get those nice and straight. Even Steven. Okay, here we go. And what I do, I don't go by the lines on my on my cutting mat, I do use the lines to line up a long edge so I know that it's nice and straight and square. There we go. And now I'm just going to take my ruler. <laughs> it's the one I picked out right here. And I'm going to trim off the edges here where the selvages are because we don't want those. Right there. And I just lined up one of the the lines going across the ruler here with this straight edge i am not marking using the the lines on the cutting mat here we go and now because this ruler these are creative grid rulers and if you're going to rotary cut with a ruler this is my ruler of choice this brand is because check this out, this is a four and a half inch wide ruler. And right over here, we see how that's frosted. That is a half inch. So I can cut up to four and a half inches by lining it up this way. So if this black area is going to be my cutting line, that black two and a half would give me a two and a half inch cut which I'm not doing yet, but to do my 10 inch, I will use the lines on the mat 
And all I just did, I just, there we go. What I did, I put the edges, I cut right along that line. I'm gonna make sure that's entirely straight and laid right at the edge of this line right here. See here? I'm lining up this entire length with that line. And I'm gonna cut it at 10 because that's the size of my layer cake squares, my 10 inch squares. 10 and then 20. Here's 20. Okay. So there's there's my 10 inch by two and a half inch strips right there out of those jelly rolls. That's how easy it is to do. Now it, you might think, oh well, what are you going to do with these little pieces here? Well, guess what? These are the fold lines here, so when you open them up, you get to cut some two and a half inch squares out of it. <clears throat> and when I was talking about the lines on this, this is what I meant right here. And with Tulip Pink, sometimes you have it's good to do a little bit of fussy cutting, because I'm gonna make sure that zebra head is in this two and a half inch square. Right there. Just getting it lined up so it's nice and square before I make my cut. There we go. Now, you might think, well, what would you, do? you'd throw that away? Oh no, I'm gonna show you what I did. Once I get these four, these three squares cut, <coughs> <coughs> what you can do with these little scraps here. I'm not going to use what I made in this particular quilt top, but I don't throw anything away, folks. And we'll do another two and a half inch cut. And then one more. Here we go. Now these three little pieces here, I will have me a little pile of scraps. And I'll show you in just a second what I did with my previous pile of scraps like that. But there those are. I'll set those to the side. So when I was cutting yesterday, <clears throat> I had a lot of different sizes of these little leftover scraps. And instead of tossing them, <laughs> okay, here's where my, o this is a good example of my OCD, everybody. I sewed all those little scraps together into a strip. Kind of cool. Check it out. And now I have another two and a half inch strip I can use in a future project. But it's a great way to recycle all these little pieces. And all I did, I used a quarter inch seam. You can see all my seams back there. And I just sewed them all together. And that's what will happen with these. They'll go on this strip. Eventually, I could have a big enough strip of this to do binding with. Wouldn't this make cool binding? Check it out if you fold it in half. This was my thought about it. Do you have some beautiful piece binding? Okay. But that's another video in the future. Okay. So everything is cut. I'm going to go over here and check out um, the comment section and then we'll get started sewing. Let me move my camera there we are okay so <clears throat> good morning Rebecca good morning Janelle good morning Carol hi Beverly good morning good morning Marcia good morning Sylvia 
Good morning, Doug. Good morning, Dolores. Hi, Rebecca. I only use two fabrics for the 10 inch squares. Yes, Rebecca, that is correct. It used to be a 10 inch square of fabric was called layer cakes. But for whatever reason, the powers that be decided to call them 10 inch charm squares now. On this package, let me read it, let me put my glasses on so I can read the, the printing on it. <laughs> Let's see here. It says on the back, right here, 10 inch charm pack, right there. So if I say layer cake, this is what, when the, these first came on the market many years ago, they were called layer cakes. <coughs> 10 inch charm packs are the exact same thing. Just like when these first came on the market, they were called jelly rolls. Jelly rolls are two and a half inch wide strips, pre-cut strips. Now they're called design rolls. So you can call it whatever you want, but it's still the same thing. Design roll or jelly roll, same thing. This has always been called this is what traditionally is what was called a charm pack. These are five inch squares of fabric. There's 42 here, just like in the 10 inch charm pack. And eventually I will get my terminology back to more modern times, but you know, it's all good. It all comes out the same. <laughs> and a blast from the past, these are called, were called jelly rolls. They also used to sell something called honey buns. Does anybody know how big a honey bun is? Honey buns were actually one and a half inch strips rolled up just like a jelly roll. That's what a honey bun is. You hardly see those anymore. <coughs> Good morning, Yvonne. Hi, Carol. And Carol, you can just adjust that in your seam allowance. It'll work out. Good morning, Beverly. Good morning, Linda. Linda J and Linda L. Good morning. Yes, Marsha. Perfect. You got that answer correct. Yes. <laughs> one and a half inch wide strip. So you might be thinking, well, why would you want one and a half inch strips? Well, that's because if you like to do strip piecing and if you ever wanted to make a posted stamp, type of quilt without having to cut out all the little one inch squares well the one and a half inch strips are how you do that and that'll be a few, you know we might just actually do that sometime in the future we'll actually make a posted stamp size quilt top okay so i am going we are going to get started so have your machines set up so you can get a good quarter inch seam and Let's see here. And I like to have my stitch length at 1.8 1 .8 millimeters mm because when you set it to like 1.6 or 1.8, you will not have to tie off the beginning and end of a seam line because I'm going to do what is called strip piecing. I'm going to do a lot of strip piecing with this. Okay. And that'll just make the whole process go quicker. If you have your fabric lined out, I don't expect you all to get done today, but at least you'll be well on the path during the live stream to get as close as possible done today. Since I'm making a much larger quilt probably than most of you are, you might even beat me getting it done. We'll see. Far as pressing goes, in a perfect world, you would press each seam each time you complete a seam. I'm not a big advocate of that simply because it's really time consuming <laughs> and I'm lazy. But I will press each block once I finish sewing the blocks together. I will nest the seams and keep the seams going towards the outside edge of each block. <coughs> Excuse me. Or 
if you're pressing and what I would personally do if I was pressing, I would actually press my seams open in a perfect world. But everybody, as far as pressing goes, everybody has their own way that they like to do that. Some people never press. Some people press every step of the way. Some just do a partial way. You can do whatever makes you happy. This today is meant to be fun. There are no quilt police present. <laughs> so everybody just have fun and let's, we're going to do our first installment of Let's Make a Quilt. And I will, pro I will actually videotape the process of me putting in the long arm and quilting it. But that will not be live because that's a very time consuming process. And I don't have studio lights where my long arms are, to be perfectly honest, to do it live. But anyway, anywho, we're going to, I'm going to move a camera before I swap over to it. And I'm going to move my stream deck where I can reach the buttons on it to do camera swaps. There we go. Okay. And I think we are ready to go. So we're going to do, we're going to start out with this overhead view that I've created. And you can get more than one angle, more than one angle look at the same time. Okay, we're going to raise that one up a bit. There we go. Okay. So the first thing I need to do, I'm going to do them in group. I have eight different colorways. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm over here on this other stack that I've got made. I have them stacked according to the colorways right here. So I'm going to do all my blocks from one colorway at a time. And that will give, that will break it down for me. That will break it down into eight segments. I like to do things like that because like a benchmark. I know I have eight, eight steps I have to do to complete all my blocks, and that's what I'm going to do. So, I'm on my Altair, I have my extension table on, I have my seam guide at a quarter inch, I have a quarter inch piecing foot on, and here are my six blocks with this fabric. Here are my two and a half inch by 10 inch strips. And then I need the two and a half inch strips to match the center right here. There's all my pieces for my first step. So, and I'm gonna orient the, some of these are, are really, um, they're very directional. There, I got that word out. So I'm gonna be careful and on these, on this particular zebra strips here that I've got, I'm actually going to put them so they're kind of running around the block. So they'll just fall, the feet will touch the inside of the block is what I'm going to do on this one. That's just me being me. <laughs> and we're about to get started. I'm going to glance over here at the chat window before I start sewing. And let's see. Rebecca, I can help you out with that. <clears throat> so, I'm going to do my first seam here. It's 1.8 millimeters in length. And what I use, what I'm using is the Q-01 on my baby lock machine. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to piece one entire block first because this process, this is the process that will re be repeated throughout. But there is one strip sewn on. Okay. Now I'm going to sew one to the bottom of it down here. There like that. 
so that one right there Then I'm going to sew on my two and a half inch squares on the ends of these. And luckily the two and a half inch squares are not as directional so it does for this particular one. So I'm not really going to knock myself out deciding which way to do that. Just lining up those edges. That laser light seam guide really helps to line up the, to present the fabric to the foot after you've lined it up to get a nice even start. And just snip those apart. Okay. Let's see here. We'll just go strictly to this view for right now. There you go. And now I'm going to sew the squares onto the opposite end of the two and a half inch strip. Okay, one more. Well, this is just for one block, everybody. I'm going to do one entire block. And then I'm going to start chain piecing the rest of it. Chain piecing will really speed up the whole process of making this quilt, or any quilt as far as that goes. So now I have two of these right there. And then. I'm going to open this up. I'm just going to finger press them open. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I want that one to come right down here like this. I'm going to have the zebra feet towards the center of the block. Okay. And since all I've been doing is finger pressing, I'm just going to make sure that these now nest together when I run them under, and that way my seam lines will match up perfectly. Okay. Now when you're sewing, and one thing you never want to do is pull back on your fabric while you're sewing, because what that will end up doing, it'll cause needle deflection. You never want to put your hand in behind the presser foot, see my fingers right there, and pull the fabric as it's sewing, same reason. You also don't want to hold on the front and pull the fabric towards you while it's sewing, same reason. You won't get perfect stitches. I know that kind of sounds really basic and primary, but a lot of people got into the habit of doing that with older machines. And when you have one of these new high-tech machine, sewing machines, that is something you should never, ever do. Okay. Some of those older machines, um, like the old singers from the 50s and stuff like that, what would happen? The feed dogs would get worn out <clears throat> and they wouldn't feed the fabric properly, either due to the feed dogs being worn out or lint build up. And people would just force the fabric, help the fabric move underneath the needle. That's how that all began many, many years ago. Luckily, we do not have to do that any longer. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank you. 
And also when I'm sewing, I do not keep, never keep your eye on the needle. You will not get a straight seam. Ask me how I know. What I'm doing, I'm watching the lineup of this laser beam right up in this area where my finger's at. Because as long as it's lined up here as it's going through, it will go through perfectly under the foot. And you'll get that perfect, consistent quarter inch seam. Okay. Guess what? I have one block done. 48 more to go for me. <coughs> but as you can see, there it is. I'm going to hold this camera up a little higher where you can get a better look at that. But there's the first block. This would be the top of it because this is directional. But there you go. Block number one. Okay. Now... I'm going to lay that one to the side. I'm going to put it over here, over to my right, because the ironing board is directly that way. So once I get a stack done, I will press these nice and flat for each time I get one color group done. Okay. So I am going to look over here. Hi, Steve from Wisconsin. Hi, Diane. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Linda. I used to have this. I used to do the same thing, Linda. Honestly, I did. Okay. So... Now I have five more of these to make, and I'll have this one color group completely done. And that's what I'm going to do next. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to attach, I'm going to run all five of these through. And I just have to keep my eye peeled to make sure I have my zebra is lined up exactly how I want it. That's the top. I'm going to do the top of mine first. If you're using batiks, this really does not apply to you. If you're using directional print, uh, fabric that has a directional print, this does apply to you. Here's one. Get another square up here. There we go. Let's see. There like that. And there's two. This will be number three. <laughs> okay. six for this series of blocks. All 
right, those stubs are done. Now I can cut that. <clears throat> Swap that camera to the multi view. There we go. Kind of see what I'm doing a little bit better that way. Alrighty, now I'm going to add a strip to the bottom. So there's that one. I'm going to put one down here next. All I have to remember for this set of blocks, this first set, the feet, zebra feet goes towards the middle. <laughs> have to keep telling myself that or I will mess up. Do, do, do. Here we go. You know, I can't emphasize enough. To me, whenever I buy a sewing machine, these little extension tables, and it's not that they're little. I mean, this one is 24 inches this way and like 18 this way. But it gives you a nice workspace because see how easy it is to line up these edges when you can just lay it out flat. I know a lot of you probably have cabinets that your machine fits in. I don't have that myself, but I do have an extension table for my machines and they make just a huge difference to me. For me, when I buy a new machine, an extension table is not an option for me. It's a necessity because that will greatly increase the accuracy of your sewing and just the ease of sewing as well. And there's a lot of extension tables out there on the market. They're all good. Me, personally, I prefer to get the extension table that is made by the machine's manufacturer, whatever manufacturer that may be. For me, it's Baby Lock. I like my extension table to match my beautiful machine. These machines are an investment, and if you're going to do it, do it right. <clears throat> And just and just get everything to match whenever possible. <coughs> Excuse me. It's just been my experience in the past that if if you buy the accessories for your machine that are made by the manufacturer of your machine, everything just works better in the long run. And that's how I play my, that's how I, that's how I rock and roll. <laughs> Ooh -wee. Okay. So this first set of units is done. Na next, next I have to attach these two and a half inch squares to the each end of these two and a half inch by 10 inch strips next. <coughs> and that's what we're going to do here. Okay. This is really where you'll see strip piecing in action. 
<clears throat> Hopefully you can see that laser light. Let me dim my overhead light, my stadium lighting here just a little bit. Because I really want you to be able to see how important and how useful that um, light is. That laser light is. There we go. Another one. Another one. Okay. And then let me turn my laser beam back on. There we go. You see that a little better now without me doing anything else. Okay. And what I'm doing, I will lay out for me. I will match this corner closest to me first and put my finger on it and then line the rest of it up, those raw edges together. And for me, it was just, it just, to me, it just seems to make it easier because if I do it the opposite way, check it out. We'll do one the other way. This is all about lining up easier ways to make lining up your pieces. If I do it up here at the top, and then I have to physically grab that corner to line it up down here. It just seems it, it's a little more, for me, I have big fingers, it's a little more cumbersome. And I guess it's really, really and truly, you can do it either way, but I'm just saying for me, that's how I, it just works better for me that way. So once again, check it out. I'm going to line up this bottom corner. And since it's closer to me, I can see it a whole lot better than the top edge of the opposite. And then I'll just line up, match up the raw edges, put it under there with my laser light, and give the foot pedal some gas. When I'm piecing, I do not use a start and stop button. I like to use my foot control, simply because it gives my foot something to do. <laughs> And it just seems like I have more control over the process by using the foot pedal. Do, do, do. They all get one on each end. Here we go. Here we go. Do, 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 do. You know, back in the 80s, I worked at a sewing factory. We made men's trousers. <clears throat> and I have to tell you, I learned a lot of little tricks on that production line that I've translated into my piecing. And what I'm doing right now is one of those little tricks. It's all about keeping things organized as they come out of your machine. If you noticed, when I cut these apart, I laid them all in a stack right over here. See my hand moving? Because when I come to, on my next step, I will pick one of these up over here bring it to here, lay, I'll have these stacked up over here, and I'll be able to lay it right on there. It's all about, it's just a way of being organized while you're sewing, and production techniques can speed up the process immensely by doing that. About to find out if I cut enough pieces on this first set. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. Okay, so now I'm going to cut these and I'm going to lay them over here because they still have to be fed through the machine. 
but I'm going to stack them up nice and neat as I go. So then I can just reach over and peel one off of that stack as I'm sewing the other line of squares onto it. Okay. You know, and the thing with the quarter inch seams, the big thing in any type of quilting, <clears throat> you always want your seams to be consistent. The more consistent your seams are, the better your end result will be. The pieces will fit together perfectly, your, seam, your seams will match up and all that fun stuff. So a big thing, a really, really important thing, use a quarter inch piecing foot with the metal edge on it to butt your fabric up against and be consistent. And it will, you will be shocked if you don't do that just by using this foot right here, one of these quarter inch piecing foot with the metal guides, it will so greatly increase your accuracy that you'll be amazed and it will just make you happy inside because everything's going will go together so much better it's a good thing <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> Can you drink a coffee? Meet me a sip. Oh, come here, you. There we go. Lachheim. <laughs> okay. And another one bites the dust. You know, <clears throat> normally I have music playing in the studio. However, when you live stream, you really can't do that because anything that is copyrighted will, ki will kick your video off the air. So that's why I do not have music playing in the background. <laughs> Three more. Three more, and these will be done. Okay. But this quilt is going to be my, my. Mike's and Puffin's special Christmas gift this year. There's a new quilt that we can all sleep under or on top of. Okay. Now I'm going to take my time and stack these up nice and neat simply because, and they're going to go over here to the, underneath the throat of my machine, simply because I've only got three, two more steps to go and I'll have this first group of blocks completely done. Okay, here we 
go. I'm just snipping the thread in between my units here. When you're making um, a, one of these strips is actually would be referred to as one unit of a block. A unit is where you sew several pieces of fabric together to make a portion of a block that will then sew the units together to make the finished quilt block and that's what we're about to get started on now. Okay. So, we'll leave that one open. Now I'm just going to, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of finger press them to the outside. Okay. Zebra feet to the center. those two together so see here check that out see there's a seam there's a seam all I'm gonna do is nest them so those are going in the opposite direction then the seam will butt up together right there and it'll make a nice even seam join the seam lines will match up is what I'm saying. If you've ever heard the term of nesting the seams together, well, that's what, that's what I just did. That is nesting. And yes, if you're pressing, you could press the seams in opposite directions to achieve that as well. But if you're not pressing, you can accomplish the same thing, has been my experience. And that, since I'm wanting to get this done on camera during this live session today, that's why I'm doing what many people are consi would consider cheating, and I'm just going to press each block as a whole after they're after they're done and that'll save me a bunch of time that way okay and i always have my machine set so when i especially when i'm piecing that my needle stops in the down position because guess what that needle by doing that the needle will actually act like a third hand and you can actually just put a little pressure pulling away from the needle to line things up and keep on going one and yes I could have chain pieced these off and I will do the rest of them that way but yeah there's two of those blocks done now and the rest of these uh, remaining four I will just chain piece off I will chain piece them is what I'm trying to say there we go chain piece it's a good thing And while it's, this is one way to use pre-cut fabrics to make a quilt top, if I had used yardage, I would have strip pieced as much of this as I could have.
And what I mean by that, <clears throat> each one of these three units could have been strip pieced. For instance, <clears throat> if I had sewn, cut a 10 inch strip of fabric, and then two two and a half inch strips of fabric and sewn those together in one long piece and then cross cut them, I could have done some strip some strip piecing even to create a large unit like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we'll get the next one started. And I do like to chain piece because it kind of gives you like little goal points that you can meet. Especially if you have a lot of blocks and stuff to make. But you can kind of do it, you have steps. And then when you replete, complete one of the steps in the process, you know, it's an accomplishment. And it motivates you. It motivates you to be able to do more and you can actually get a sense of accomplishment while you're piecing your quilt. Okay. Let's get the next one started. Now on a long one like that, I mean, you do really have to line up the edge that goes in first because there's just no way to do it otherwise. <clears throat> Cutting that one after all. I wasn't going to, but I did. I have one more. Okay, one more of these. I'll let you go over there. do this. Once I get this first group of blocks done, I'm going to take a short break and not really a breaky break, but I'm going to watch the chat window and drink some fluids and I'm going to press these blocks. So my first six are done and I'll have one eighth of this quilt top pieced. actually thinking about making this particular video this particular live more of a regular thing <clears throat> at least for the month of December and January because right now I won't be traveling again until the end of February and I'm, it's what I'm contemplating right now because I'm sitting here and I'm watching the clock on my machine. And I thought, oh, I'll get this done in four hours. Well, maybe I won't get it done in four hours. So we may have to make this like a multi-part live <laughs> to get it done. I don't know, I kind of like, when I'm doing this step, is just be 
being able to th throw each block to the side once I get it complete because it's just really a wonderful feeling of accomplishment. Let's see. Right there like that. You got to do what makes you happy, right? And that's the thing with sewing. Whether you're making garments or quilts or home decor, when you're doing it, it should make you happy. It should put you in your happy place. If it's causing you stress, that means it's not fun. And who wants to do something that's not fun? I know I don't. And that kind of in turn goes to um, that in turn goes to being what I call suffering from being a perfectionist. Because I can tell you, I used to be a perfectionist. I still want stuff to come out so that I'm happy with it, but I'm not going to let it drive me crazy anymore. Because if you have, if you are a recovering perfectionist or you're still in treatment, <laughs> yes, I did just say that, there's hope for you. There is a light at the end of the tunnel because I can tell you, we all, even if, even if you don't strive as much as you used to to be one, there are times, of course, you know, it's going to happen and you'll rip out stitch after stitch out of stitch if that doesn't line up just perfect. Well, here's how I look at that. If you want a perfect quilt, you better be entering that in a quilt show. Because as far as I'm concerned, the only reason to put yourself through that much stress, you better be going after a, after a first place ribbon or something. Because that's the only way, in my mind, I could ever justify putting myself through the rigors of the stress of making a perfect quilt. Or as close to perfect as I can. Once you learn to relax and enjoy the process, quite honestly, you almost get that perfection anyway because you're enjoying what you're doing and you're not stressed about it. When you're stressed, you tense up, and then that's how you might make a boo-boo. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and let's see here. One more seam. And <clears throat> this, this set of blocks will be complete. First set of blocks are complete, and now I am ready to press them and iron them. <clears throat> okay. But as you can see, that's all there is to making, to piecing the blocks. It's a pretty, it's really a straightforward, easy process. You do not have to make something crazy complicated. doesn't have to make it as complicated as you want it to be. It's all good. Okay. So let's see here. I'm going to read the, read my, <laughs> gosh, let me get my thoughts together. I'm going to read the comment section in our chat window here. Okay. Wonderful, Rebecca. Isn't it wonderful? I can tell you that laser light that was first introduced, oh, it's been at least eight or nine years ago on the Baby Lock Crescendo. It's the reason I bought the Crescendo was for that laser light because it is so beneficial and helpful. 
when it comes to piecing. Wonderful, Carol. That is what I had originally planned on doing as well because I thought, okay, I'm going to make the size quilt I need just out of one 10 inch charm square pack and one design roll, two and a half inch design roll pack. Well, when I started doing the math after the fact, I realized I'll not make a hundred inch by a hundred inch quilt, quilt top out of that, which is what I have to have. So I doubled it and that's why I went this way. You can, you don't, there's no rule that says you have to put the same four two and a half inch strips around each block. You can make it as scrappy as you want to and it will still look beautiful and fabulous. Okay. Oh, Carol and Beverly, I'm right there with you on that one also. I still have some Tula Pink fabric I have not been able to bring myself to put scissors to. But it's much older now and <clears throat> it's actually kind of like a collector's thing, collector's fabric now, if you must know the truth. But yeah, we all have fabric like that. Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go and press my six blocks I just made, and then we're going to get started on the next set of blocks. Okay. <laughs> I do already have, oops, come here you, have my iron already preheated. And let's see. Let's see how this will work. I might, let me think here. I think I can move this camera around where you might be able to get a view of my ironing board. There we go. There we go. Now you can see me iron, maybe. Okay. But you get the idea this way and all I'm gonna do I'm just going to iron it from the back and press the seams out to the edge, out to the edge, edge of the block. The big thing with this when you're quilting, you just want your quilt to lay as flat as possible. And yes, I sometimes I'll even use a little steam where there's a lot of seams, nice and flat that way. Okay, so there's one. And as you can see right there, nice and flat. And let me do a quick measurement. And yes, that is measure 14 inches. It measures 14 inches because it still has a half inch worth of seam all the way around the edge of it. I get them done. Now I'm going, when I get back to that machine, I will be going into full strip PC mode. Because so I really want to, I really, I really got to get this quilt top done today. 
so that <clears throat> tomorrow I can get it loaded in my quilt frame to quilt. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> this is Sunday. Yes, it's Sunday. To Tuesday, I will be live on Sewing Machines Plus website for their countdown to Christmas event they'll be running for five days. And I will be demoing the Altair and the Accomplish for Sewing Machines Plus. Each time I do one of these Let's Make a Quilt um, videos, I will be using a different machine each time, just so you know. And today it just happens to be the Altair. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. Alrighty. Woohoo. Hi, Donna. Welcome. All right, now we're going to. I just got my first six walks pieced right here. I have six of these. You want to bring him in a little closer? Okay. Oh, Carol, you won't go wrong with the Accomplish. I love it is my PC machine. I'm doing this on the Altair today because that's the first machine. I have it set up for Tuesday for my Countdown to Christmas special on Sewing Machines Plus. And that'll be the first machine that I am demoing. And then... <clears throat> I will just be able to swap it, unplug it, and plug the Accomplish in. The great thing about, another great thing about that Accomplish, for those of you that have like an Altair or a Destiny or a Solaris, the power cords and the foot controls are the exact same one. So you don't have to like move wires around if you're moving machines around in your studio. For me, that's an important thing. <laughs> So next, I'm going to do two and a half inch strips of pandemonium. It has the panda bears on it. I'm going to put them on the lime, lime green sketcher fabric, the mint. Check out this fabric. It's so cool. Okay. And then I'm going to do the matching black and white panda two and a half inch squares. So that's my next foray right here. And no, I'm not. I'm doing this the mint green. I'm not doing these squares. No, I'm doing these next. Right there. There we go. <laughs> okay. Woohoo. Alrighty. <coughs> Excuse me. So, and let's see, this is not directional. And that's a good thing. I'll have to be quite so careful. The parts that are directional, however, are these pandas. So, what I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to make the faces stay in the same orient and rotate them all the way around. So, for instance, up here, that would be like that. And then I would rotate it around like so. And down here at the bottom, they would be like so. And that way it gives a nice visual effect. It's like the, the faces are streaming right, right around the entire block. <clears throat> so that's what I have to be careful with on this one. 
doesn't matter on this, but it does on the panda strips. Okay. And I have seven of these blocks to do. Because remember, I'm doing 49 by 49. I'm just going to strip piece all of these on there. Strippy piece them all together. I got seven. You can see me rotating those. Folks, that's my OCD kicking in. If I was going to make it truly scrappy, it would not matter what direction any of the prints went. So my whole spill about being the perfectionist thing, yeah, sometimes you just can't help yourself and you have to do what you have to do. <laughs> it's all good. I think in this fabric collection, one of my favorite of the 13 are the ones with the panda bears on them. They're really cute. seven right there. Okay. So when you're strip piecing, there's more than one way to 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 do it for instance so yes I can go and I can snip off in between each individual one of these right now if I wanted to or I can just leave them chained together okay and flip it that way see what I've done there I still have them all chained together and attached here and then just run them through like that And the thing is, 
one thing that does, <clears throat> it keeps it a little bit more organized as far as the order of everything. And if you can do it, if you can allow yourself to do it like this, you only have to snip your threads at one time instead of stopping in between each step and snipping threads. Just whatever you're the most comfortable with. See how they're just kind of all lining up nice and neatly together? And that's what that does. It, it will actually make it easy, a little easier to line up and everything. There we go. Alrighty, now, this time, however, <clears throat> I am going to snip my threads, because I'm going to change the direction, so that's one unit out of three complete for this group of blocks. Just move them off to the side here. Because now, next, I've got to put my two and a half inch squares on the end of each one of my two and a half by 10 inch strips. And we'll come back to those in just a moment. Here we go, right here. Okay. So, there is really no right or wrong way for that. So all I have to do now is just, I'm going to run all of my 2.5 by 10 inch strips through and attach one of these squares onto each end of them. And that will be another strip piecing deal. Okay. But I tell you, when I am getting ready to break out another tool once I get this subset done. Because there's a really good tool for 
to make the cutting process of trimming threads just a little bit easier and we're going to play with that once I get all of these run through. Just keep on keeping on getting all of these little squares attached to the end of our two and a half by ten inch strips. quite the right size. We'll see. Oh, I see. Okay. It's all good. I did cut some extra two and a half inch squares in case I miscut one. If something doesn't look right, I will catch it and replace it, which I think I just caught one there. That one does not look quite right. Nope, it's fine. It'd be fine. There we go. Oh, except that I just sewed that on backwards. Oh my goodness. And when I get distracted, this is what happens, everybody. Check it out. I sewed it the wrong way. <laughs> so let's see. I need a seam ripper. Or maybe I'll just use my scissors. Let me get my seam ripper. There you are. Okay. Okay. We're going to rip out a seam. Oh, and I am using 50 weight uh, Madeira Katona piecing thread right now. No one asks, but it just happens to be what I have in the machine right now. I really prefer to piece with a 50 weight thread whenever possible. And what I do, I will cut my thread and give it a little gentle tug and it came on it right on out. That's how I rip out a seam. Something none of us like to do. Oh my gosh. There we go. Okay. Right sides together. <laughs> I don't care how long you've been doing this, eventually everybody has to rip out a seam. That's just a part of life. 
Woohoo! Two more. Then I'm gonna go get up and get my magic strip piecing tool. Chain piecing tool, not strip piecing. Alrighty, now we're going to cut those all apart. Now I could pull these apart and use this and snippy, snippy, snippy. Let's go to a different camera view here for a little bit. But what I'm going to walk over here and get my chain piecing cutting gizmo made by the Gypsy Quilter. I want you to check this out. You know, you can never have too many notions or tools, but check this little dude out here. See this? Down in here are cutting blades inside of those grooves. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick up my chain. Check it out. Cut. 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 Isn't that cool? And look how much faster it is. It really speeds up the process. Because some quilts you do, if you're doing the chain piecing method, you may have a chain with 100 pieces to cut apart like I'm doing right now. And it really is much easier on your hands if you have a lot of chain piecing to cut apart. There. See how fast that was? And that is called... <clears throat> The Cutting Gizmo by Giz Gypsy Quilter. Love that tool. It's one of my favorite little tools. Okay, so now we're going to attach one to the other end. And then we'll have all three units done for these blocks. I made a quilt top one time, everybody, that had 8,000 pieces of fabric in it. And this is how I pieced it. I did chain piecing. I did a lot of chain piecing for that one. That was a customer quilt. Many, many years ago. Yes, it was a posted stamp quilt is what it was. One inch finished squares.
This is how we piece our quilt. Peace. <laughs> I, will, I will not make you suffer through my singing. <laughs> but this is how we piece our quilt. <laughs> All day long. <laughs> Ooh. Not enough caffeine in me yet, folks. <laughs> When I finish these blocks, when they're pressed, I'm going to go turn my coffee, my water heater on, and have another cup of coffee. We'll take a short, a short break <laughs> at that time. But when I finish this set of blocks, I have 25% of my blocks pieced for my king size quilt top. <clears throat> when I get half of these pieced, I'm going to lay some of them out on the design wall in behind me and explain the process of sewing them together. And you'll it'll really put into focus just how all of that is going to work once I do that. Okay. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> and now on this one, I just have to make sure that I have my, my bears on. See here how that's going to look? Let me show you this. Let me pick this up. Check this out here. But see, my, my heads are going to all stay facing in the same direction as they go around that block. That was my goal, what I decided to do for this one in particular. So now I'll just do this. Get you started right there. Okay. Making sure I nest those seams. lining up that top edge and getting a needle in it getting it started then I'll line up each seam I'll 
line up this other seam line. And if you notice, when I stop, see how my presser foot rose? I have my, on this machine, I have what's called pivoting turned on. And that's why it does that. When you stop, your presser foot will raise just a little bit so you can pivot or feed more fabric underneath it. And that's another feature I like to have turned on my machine is pivoting. And the way that looks on this particular machine. You see that little icon that has the needle with going through the presser foot and it's turned blue. If I touch that, it just turned that turned it off and my presser foot then lowered all the way down. But if I turn that on and now it will raise the presser foot will raise up when I stop. This will allow me to pivot or reposition fabric under it. Very useful one in piecing. Very, very useful. This color here is what I'm going to use for the, the backing of my of this quilt. And another one going on. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do. Here we go. I have also tonight. And I, gosh, I'm late. I've got to get it done tonight. I have to get my Christmas packages ready to drop off for shipping tomorrow. I have not got that done yet, and I have to get that accomplished. <clears throat> This one done. This one put through, and I'll take it. I'll come over and look at the chat window. Oh, I've made a boo boo there. Check it out. I didn't cut the selvage off of that end, but you know what? I'm leaving it on. It that just means the the quilting gods decided I needed to leave that in there. <laughs> Old Richard would have ripped all of that out. New Richard doesn't do that. I think the selvages are pretty anyway, but that's just how it happened. It was one of those serendipity things, which I like. I do that a lot anymore as far as I look at it as serendipity. It was just happened and it was meant to be, and that's what that quilt wanted. 
to be complete, so that's what it got. It got to keep one little piece of its salvage, <laughs> of its fabric salvage in the quilt. <clears throat> okay. Yes, this little gizmo, this cutting gizmo was was so worth the money. It was not expensive. It was thirteen or fourteen dollars, I think. But it just makes life so much easier. Okay, so let me go over here and have a look. A hey, look, see. Okay. Hooey, where are we at here? Okay, so whoever, whoever is putting, folks, if you're watching this, do not click, do not click on people who are putting in, like, VASK.tech. I guarantee you that some, some butt wipe trying to get you to click something to porn. Unfortunately, for a live stream, I have no way to control that. Now, on my canned videos, I have to approve every comment that keeps low lifes like that from trying to get you to click on something. So please do not, do not click on any links that someone puts into this chat window unless you personally know them and trust them. I cannot emphasize that enough. Okay, Diane. Do I starch my fabric? Diane, this fabric I did not because it came directly out of a pre-cut package. Let me change my camera. <coughs> no, I did not starch this fabric because this fabric all was all pre-cut fabric that came directly out of the packages and was just cut up and then started sewing with it. So no, normally I do not starch my fabric, no. If I pre-wash fabric, then I would consider starching it, but if it's new fabric from a pre-cut package or off of the bolt, I do not starch anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so, I am going to go take, I'm going to go get me another cup of coffee. Well, hi, Debbie Williams. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So, Debbie, I just, I just came over here. I am live, and I will be on today until I get my king-size quilt top completely pieced, is what I've decided. I thought I'd get it done in four hours, but I'm probably going to be here until four o'clock Central Standard Time piecing on this quilt top. But I have to go get another cup of coffee so I can do this. <laughs> I will be back in five minutes, I promise. And I'm going to move to my multi-camera view. There we go. <clears throat> and yes, I still have my microphone on. So you all can just, I'm just walking back to the kitchen. and get me some coffee creamer. Take a couple of minutes. <clears throat> and let's see here.
wonderful hate for free coffee creamer today. And coming back to the camera, back to the studio. See, that was a quick cup. Quick, quick cup of coffee. Alrighty. Okay. And I had to grab a cookie also. This is Cheryl's Cookies from Columbus. They're made in Columbus, Ohio. See those? You Ohio people out there, you probably know what these are. But I was in November, I was in, since in Cleveland for pins and needles doing a wonder doing my surgery quilt camp and the owner of the store after it was over sent me a box of these cookies from Columbus and thank you so much Jan they have been greatly appreciated <laughs> okay hooey I'm going to have my cookie and coffee, and then I'm going to get started sewing again. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. And just so everybody knows, this... This is being recorded here on on YouTube, and it will be available as a recorded video <clears throat> that you can rewatch, and all that fun stuff here on YouTube. Okay, why is that camera going in and out of focus? Well, let's put a stop to that. It's that one. Configure video. Thought I had the autofocus turned off of that. Evidently not. There, that should have solved that problem. And okay. 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 Hoo wee. There we go. What are you doing in there? Come here. A little dog decided he had to go explore in here. Come here, Bubby. Come here. Come here. Come here. There you go. You're not coming up here to get out of my cookie, though, because you just can't have that. This is my little dog, Puffin. Those of you that, that watch me a lot, you've seen him before. Those of you that, knew, that are new have probably not seen him a bit. He's my little Yorkie. He's my little studio dog. He loves to sleep under my quilts. Or on top of them. He, lo he loves his quilts. Yes, you do. You're a good boy. Daddy loves you. Yes. There you go. Okay. But he saw me in the kitchen and saw I grabbed a cookie to bring in here. And he thought he did come in here and be able to beg some of it away from me. But... He cannot have those. <laughs> okay. Yes, I hear your rat baby puffy. So next, we're going to finish up this set of blocks. Then I'll give them a press. I will iron them and we'll move on to our next set. Okay. Yeah, let me 
get my chair centered a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Now we're ready to rock and roll. Okay. Get everything lined up here. going to get all of this this last set of units sewn on top sewn down the side of these blocks seam line it's nested then we get this one nested another one so has everybody been watching the news over the last two days <clears throat> all of my family is safe down there but my family in Kentucky boy howdy those the Mayfield tornadoes hit close to home that's only like half an hour south of Paducah and I've been to that town many a times and it is it looks like a nuclear bomb went off and leveled the city of Mayfield, Kentucky. It's horrible. <clears throat> the National Quilt Museum in Paducah did make a statement today that it was they came across they didn't have any damage. <clears throat> But you just never know, do you? I mean, a lot of people ask me when I lived in Galveston, well, aren't you afraid of hurricanes? No, quite honestly, no. You have days to get out of the way of a hurricane. You do not do not have that luxury with tornadoes. You have, if you're lucky, you have two minutes. So folks, long story short, if you live in an area where they have tornadoes, for God's sake, take it seriously. Don't wait to the last minute to go to a shelter. When it says tornado watch, you get your, your stuff together and be ready to go to a shelter. If you have a tornado warning, even if it's not close to you, you go to you go and get in the shelter. Because if it's a warning, even if it's five miles away where it's been spotted, that doesn't mean it couldn't come down right on top of you. Okay. 
I went through a hurricane in 2008, Hurricane Ike. It was a Category 2 storm, but it had Category 5 uh, storm surge, and I lost everything. Material-wise, I lost everything. No one was hurt, thank God. But I have to tell you, what I learned going through a hurricane is this. Stuff is just stuff. You can replace stuff. You cannot replace those that you love. Oh, come on, you. What'd I do? Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> You have to have that presser foot down for that thread cutter to work. <coughs> okay. There are seven more blocks done. I'm going to get those cut apart. <coughs> then I'll walk over here and give them a good pressing. Walk over to the ironing board. Ouch. Yes, you get to peek at my mess. That's part of it. <laughs> Woohoo. Okay. Okay. There we go. And when I press a quilt block, I like to put the right side down because I'm just going to press the seams out towards the outside edges of the block. You don't want to overpress things because if you do that, you can stretch the fabric or your seams. You don't want to do that. And this is just to really make it lay, lay flatter. So when you, if you don't quilt it or you send it off to be quilted, you'll get a much better result if everything has just had a nice little press to it. Okay. And this time I am just going to press it from the front. Do, 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 do. I'm going to be here just a second longer. And you know, I think I will do um, next Sunday. 
I am going to do another one of these lies. I'm going to make it an every Sunday thing for right now, anyway, while I'm not traveling. But here for the next two months, I will do this every Sunday, and I might move it to noon. I think that's what I'm going to do. But next Sunday, I am going to have my camera set up, and you can see how I'm going to quilt this in my long arm. That'll still, that way it'll still be done in time for Christmas. That's my big goal for this quilt. Since it is our Christmas gift, I just want it done in time for Christmas Eve. And that will be give me plenty of time to get it done. Okay. So, next is this fabric. This is like um, a rainbow hexagon kind of fabric. I can't think. It's a hexy. See here? Isn't that pretty? Love that fabric. It's out of Tula Pink's line works. And this one I'm going to put around the edges is actually, it's called Lemur Me Alone. It just so happens, here's what its 10 inch squares look like. That's not a good representation. Here we go. So, lemur me alone. This is what, look at the cute lemurs in it. Aren't they cute? Okay, that's what we're working with right now. And get those set to the side. There we go. Okay. Then I'll need these two and a half inch squares as well. There's our parts right there from this next set of six blocks. I'm right there with you, Beverly. I just happened to see that over there on the chat menu. It was horrible. It's just, it's just unreal. Um, I can tell you, <laughs> you cannot, you don't have much time to get out of the way of a tornado. Unlike with a hurricane, normally you get at least a four day warning that something's coming. And the downside to that is people, sometimes people won't evacuate for a hurricane because they think, well, it's not going to hit me directly. But you never know with them. They can change course so quickly. So just take that stuff seriously. Better safe than sorry. Hey, Bobby. I see you over there puffing. What you doing? Hmm? Yes, you're a good dog. Daddy loves you. You're going to love this quilt once we get it done and we can sleep under it, though. Yes, this will be your quilt too, Puffin. Puffin's over here on the floor beside me, staring at me. Did I just run out of... 
I think. No, I didn't. Of course, I did not run out of bobbin thread. My bobbin sensor, did, my machine didn't tell me. <laughs> Come here, you. Come here, you. Okay. Step is done. And we'll get these little, little jewels cut. set. So these lemur strips, I'm trying to set them because they are also directional so that they are so there's a top and a bottom to them. That one didn't have a head on it so it was a little more difficult to tell which I guess is a good thing but I'd just like to see this one here I did. See there's its little face and it's it's in the proper orientation to look at me. I'm going to do all four sides that way. Then it'll be just like the little panda bear scenario. Okay. Okay. So, right there. Come on, you. There we go. everybody I think everything got reconnected the video should be coming back on very momentarily let's see here do do do
I hope everyone can, I don't know if anyone can hear me. If you can hear me, please make a comment in the chat section. I am still trying to get the video to show. Yay, you gotta look. That's what happens with something live, everybody. <laughs> We've all been there and done that, right? So why is this not... I think it's still live, I think. But, um, and my stream hasn't ended. But why isn't my video showing? Do, 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 do. It shows that it's live. And that's connected. Oy vey. Okay, maybe this brought it back. Let's see here. There we go. There we go. Can everybody hear me? Please put something into the chat window if you can hear me. We had a power outage. Everything here in my studio had to reboot, hence a brief pause in the videos and all that stuff. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. Okay, I think we're back on everybody. We had a power, we had a, a brown out here. Um, everything I have is on battery backup, but it caused the, the, the router and the modem to reboot. So can everybody hear me? I need someone to put a, a message into the chat window so I know we're back ready to get started sewing again. I think we're all good right now. That is streaming into YouTube. It is showing up on the YouTube screen. I think we're all good right now. Okay, we are. So I just heard myself talking on this other window that I have open. There we go. Okay. Okay, everybody, so we're going to get started back sewing. One of the wonderful things about a live video is that if there is a snafu in technology, you get to witness it, and that's what you just got to do. <laughs> so we're going to get started back over here where I left off. Let's see here. Right? Right. Okay. And as I was saying earlier, <clears throat> um, as I was saying earlier, everything I have in my studio is on a big battery power supply backup. 
but when it hits an area that doesn't have a battery backup such as as the mobile as the router and the modem yeah that's why we had a complete brownout here in the studio <laughs> but it's all back up and running you didn't miss a thing i actually paused um, from doing anything else until i knew everything was back up like it should be so here we go again Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. When you get a chance, please type something into the chat window because I don't I can't tell if it is broken or not. Part. Okay. And then, okay. And get all of these going. Our side strips. <clears throat> One of these days, I'll have a Tula Pink quilt show and show off my Tula Pink quilts that I have made. I've got several quilt tops made out of my Tula Pink fabric that I need to get quilted, and that's what I'm going to be doing during the month of December. I'm going to experiment with some camera setups for my long arm. So you can see how I do that. Now, everything I do on my long arms is all free motion. There's nothing is computerized. Maybe next year I'll be able to get a pro stitcher. We'll see. But I do like to free motion. <clears throat> you really become one with your quilt <clears throat> when you free motion quilt it. And what I mean by that is you touch every square inch of it with your hands as you're quilting it. So a quilt becomes a really a really um, intimate part of your creative process because you have such a connection to it. And you know, certain fabrics can recall certain memories and life events and different things like that. And to make a quilt can just be a really personal journey in our creative road. I guess is the best way that I could say what I'm trying to say. A 
think one of the things that just kind of drives me bonkers <laughs> is when someone will say, oh, well, that's a pretty blanket. I'll show them a quilt that I've made or something. And that's where I just have to put on a smile on my face and kind of grip my teeth and, oh, why, thank you. That's a wonderful compliment. Because I can tell you, being a quilt maker, the last thing you want your quilt called that you have spent, in many instances, over a hundred hours to make or longer is for someone to call your beautiful quilt you put your heart and soul into and call it a blanket. That's just not cool. But you have to remember, they don't know any better. It's... That's how you really define someone who is quilt worthy or not. And what I mean by that, you've heard, probably heard that term before. Angela Walters uses it a lot, but it's very true. If people look at your beautiful handmade quilt and think it's a blanket and what makes me, th they're not quilt worthy for a spectacular quilt simply because they're not going to take care of it and cherish it. <laughs> so that's how you can decide who gets what. If you're going to give someone a quilt as a gift, that's one way to determine how great of a quilt they're going to get or how basic of a quilt they're going to get. Because if they're just going to treat it as, as, as a, a blanket, then yeah, they're they're not going to get like one of my tulip pink quilts or a quilt that I have like over a thousand pieces of hand cut fabric into or anything like that. Yeah, they're going to get like maybe a, a quilt made from a bunch of fat quarters being sewn together that they can treat as a blanket. <laughs> I know that sounds horrible, but that's just the way I feel. <laughs> Because, you know, not only does it take a lot of time, you invest a lot of time in making that quilt. But think about how much money you put into your sewing equipment to be able to sew it. <coughs> Excuse me. And quilt it. Not to mention the, the, the cost of fabric. We all know... Good, good quilting fabric is not cheap, right? So, that all of that can make a huge difference when you're deciding what kind of quilt someone's going to get as a gift. <laughs> you know, if it's someone who just loves quilts and they and all that, you know it'll be cherished and taken care of. I don't mind giving a really nice quilt to someone like that. But if it's someone who's going to take the quilt and throw it in the back in the trunk of a car to use at the beach and all that fun stuff, well, yeah, you're not getting one of my good quilts. Sorry. <laughs> Just not going to happen, folks. <laughs> And, let's see here. Woohoo. I think, no, I get one more group past this, so I'll have half of my blocks done. Woohoo. So I still don't know if our chat is working or not, everybody. I haven't seen any chat message for a while. I just 
just don't understand. I'm going to refresh the screen. Hold on. And I know I'm live because I see the video. I see the video. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Wonderful. Okay. Woohoo. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Everything is like back like it was. Now I see that. Okay. So I noticed over there who said that? Rebecca, can someone tell me what is so special about Tula Pink fabric? Well, Rebecca, it's like this. <laughs> Hold on a minute. There we go. Now you can see me. <laughs> Here's the thing about Tula Pink. We all, everybody, Tula Pink is a fabric designer and quilt maker that lives just out, just north of Kansas City, Missouri. Missouri. And if you really want to know about Tula Pink, here on YouTube, she has a ton of videos. She is just a really cool person. I have met her. I met her at um, in 2017 at the Houston Quilt Festival, and she. I love her fabric because it's happy fat. What I call happy fabric. It has beautiful animals and faces and all kinds of stuff, and the colors are bright and cheerful. And for me, it just makes me happy when I see it, when I touch it, and when I sew on it. That's what is special about Tula Pink fabric. It's a special, whimsical fabric that brings happiness. And that's what it's supposed to be. Okay, that's what is special about Tula Pink fabric. Okay. Whew, that being said. Now, let's get back to this. I just got a few more here to go. One, I need three more. There we go. Rainbow Hexes is what I'm using. This one. You know, and everybody has their own favorite favorite fabric. This just happens to be mine. I also like Cave fabric. He has awesome lines of fabric. I like Tim Holtz. And all that being said, I just realized. <clears throat> There's different fabric companies and represents different fabric artists. And I really like the Free Spirit line of fabric. I like their designers. It's, it's my cup of tea. I am not a calico fabric type of person. <clears throat> I mean, it's what I, what I started with. I think it's what a lot of people start with when they first making quilts or the old calicos. And, and that's all well and good. It truly is. However, I like this is what I call my happy fabric. It just makes me happy to see it, to touch it, to look at it, to study it. And Tula comes out with about with two different lines of fabric each year. Back in the summer, she came out with an Alice in Wonderland line of fabric. <clears throat> and she just came out with one called, called Daydreamer in November. And that's some cool stuff too. Okay. So, let me see where I'm at here. Set you right over there out of the way. Now, it doesn't seem like I have enough. Did I miss something here? Maybe there's 12 there. Meh. We'll see. <laughs> I may have to cut more fat. No, I don't. I have enough here. It just doesn't look like it. Okay. <coughs> Let's see here. 
But for this project, you can use any fabric you want. They make the fabric comp all fabric lines of fabric. Most do. I'm not going to say all. They have the 10 inch charm packs or called layer cakes. They have the 5 inch charm packs, which are called charm packs. 5 inches square, 10 inches square. You get what I'm saying. They all have jelly rolls, or they're now called design rolls. Two and a half inches by 42 or 44, whatever the width of fabric is for that line of fabric. And out of those, you can make quite a variety of different quilts. The thing is, regardless of what fabric you want to make a quilt out of, find a fabric that makes you feel happy inside just to look at it. If it puts a smile on your face. Well, you know then that that is a fabric that you need to work with because it makes you happy just to see it, let alone do anything else with it. Doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Because when you're making a quilt, they're not the ones going to be making it. You're the one going to spend all those hours with that fabric. So it better, it better make you happy just to look at it, let alone to sew it and everything else. You know, there's times I like to piece a quilt with tiny little pieces in it. And there's other times I like to make quilts with big pieces in it, like this one. And right now I'm happy to, make, to be making this with the big pieces in it. As it makes me feel like I'm, I'm accomplishing a lot, whether I am or not. <laughs> okay. Here we go. And let's see which way do I want those to go. Maybe we're going to go that way. Okay, one more of this one. One more, then we'll cut them apart and do the last side. And this group of blocks will be complete.
Okay. And we'll get those cut. Now, you could actually make these <clears throat> if you were not. Let's see, how can I say this? So you could actually, if you're not using pre-cuts, you could make this with any size square in the middle and the size of the strips. Does that make sense? For instance, you could actually use a chart. You could put, have a five inch square in the middle here if you wanted to, if you wanted something that had more piecing in it and still make this type of a, of a quilt as well. Easy to do, it's all straight lines. <clears throat> it's all good. It's all good. Okay. I'm about ready to lose the rug underneath the area I am sitting on because my rolly chair will not roll on this plush um, wool rug I have under here. And let's see here. Make sure, I have my stuff lined up like I want it. Here we go. I'm, so what I'm, one thing I'm thinking about while I'm sitting here piecing it is how I might possibly want to quilt it. Because, you know, <clears throat> a good rule of thumb is this. Unless you're just wanting something... No, a good rule of thumb is this. If you have a lot of squares in a quilt, it's nice to have something as far as a quilting design that has curves in it simply because it helps break up all of those straight lines. In the piecing. And I'm probably going to, 
I'm probably going to do one of my free motion feathered. If, um, it's kind of like an overall meander, but it's not really. It's more... It has more substance to it than just an overall meander. I am going to do nested feathers throughout the whole quilt. And that's what I'm planning on for this particular quilt once it's in my frame. <clears throat> we'll see. The thing is, this fabric's really busy. So you don't want to get, when you have a lot of busy fabric in a quilt, if you try to do a fancy design, you'll get lost in it. So that's something else to always keep to have in the back of your head. Well, do you really want to put a lot of time into quilting? Because what's going to be noticeable in the quilt is the fabric and not the quilting. So I might even just do an overall meander. I don't know yet. It'll all be good, whichever way it is. <laughs> okay. Let's get these cut apart and go to the pressing station. Now I'm not going to turn the camera this time as far as that goes. <clears throat> <coughs> okay, be right back. I'm going to go press. <clears throat> okay. Do, 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 do. Do 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 do. Well, there's one right there. There we go. And I really like to pr kind of press groups of blocks as I go because it can be a daunting task <laughs> if you wait and you have 50 quilt blocks to press all at one time. Of course, if you're, quilt, if you're pressing each step as you go, you wouldn't have to do what I'm doing now. But I personally, I just like to do all of my pressing in one easy step. That's just me. Alrighty, almost done with this, this part. Okay. Those are all done. Alrighty. Okay. <clears throat> and we have another group to get started on now. drink a sip of my coffee and there we go 
check the chat window. Alrighty. Let's see. Oh, hi, Carol. Yeah, the blue quilt in behind me. Let me just bring this camera a little closer. Hold on. There you go. That is a one block based on a one block wonder design of mine. And what that quilt is, that is what I refer to as my 10 plus year quilt. That quilt, <clears throat> that is all 2007 Laurel Birch fabric, Ocean Song fabric. And when my, during Hurricane Ike in 2008, I had the pieces cut for that quilt and they were in a plastic container and when the hurricane hit, the quilt pieces for that quilt floated inside a plastic container in my old historical home in Galveston, Texas. I lost all of my sewing stuff except for the pieces for this quilt top. And that's why I call it my 10-year quilt. I have worked on that quilt top since 2008. It is quilted now and all that fun stuff and complete. But yeah, that was my, that was, that quilt remind is my hurricane quilt. And it's what I used as an emotional means to come to terms with everything that I lost from that period of time in my life. But that is my 10 year quilt. Those are all pieced hexagons is what they are. It's like a kaleidoscope hexi. And I will take it off of the wall because I'm going to put some of these blocks I've pieced up onto the wall here so we can see those. So, I have used my every sewing machine I have owned since 2008, after about well, 2009 actually, because I lost all of my machines and quilts and fabrics and books and patterns literally everything like this from my life I lost in 2008 due to a hurricane except for this little quilt right here the pieces to this quilt I should say so I'll just give you a little bit closer up view and you can see some of the heavier quilting in it kaleidoscope those are 60 degree triangles sewn together but that is my my her that is my survivor quilt right there my 10-year quilt as it's been referred to in the industry okay so i'm going to put a few one each of the blocks i've got done so far up here on the wall Come here, you. There we go. One of these. <clears throat> there we go. This is how they'll kind of sew together. I'm not sure those two will sew together, but you'll get the idea of what this is going to look like. one of these. I have three different blocks pieced out of eight so far. There we go. So you can kind of see what that'll look like. Once we get it a little bit closer, I'm going to grab this other camera. You can 
see that better now. As you see, once it's set together, you'll have four different two and a half inch squares here in this corner area where they meet. They'll make a four patch right here. So if I put, for just so it can explain it better, hold on. Reset this. There we go. So when you set four blocks together, you will get a four patch right here in the center. Okay, right there. But this, I'm gonna have it set so no two fabrics are side but are concurrent next to each other. So this will be a different block, will be right here. But you get the idea of what I'm doing with this, this picture right here. There we go. This will not be the same. This block will not stay here. It'll be a completely different set of fabrics that go right here. Okay. Let go you wires. The bane of my existence are all these wires everywhere. Okay, here we go. Hooey. Now then. Okay, I see you, Puffy. I see you, Popos. Yes, you're a good doggy. You're being needy today. You're being really needy today, Puffin. Okay, so two different fabric sets. So this is like a marbled fabric right here in that, that particular collection of fabric. See what that looks like, isn't that pretty? It's called mineral. And then this one, you just gotta love it. You don't have to, I guess. But guess what this is? This is a skunk, it's called Little Lil Stinker. Let me get one of the big squares of that one out. You can more see what that one looks like. But check out, yes, in this line of this fabric collection are skunks. Check it out. Little stinker. Isn't it cute? Just love it. <laughs> okay. So, this is the next one I'm going to do, though, is right here. Let's see. Uh, yep. And then I'll need these also. So, there's all my fabrics for this next group right there. There we go. We're going to get started on our next set of blocks.
So I noticed in the comments, someone asked, is there a certain type of thread I like to use for quilting? Now for actual quilting, quilting, not piecing, but the quilting thread, yes, there is. I personally like to use Madeira Arrow Quilt Quilting Thread in my long arm. It's, it comes on a 3,000 yard cone. You can also use it in your um, embroidery machines to quilt with as well. You could even use it to piece with if you wanted to. It would be fine to piece with. But yeah, that's that's what I like to use. Madeira Arrow Quilt quilting thread. Comes in a lot of different solid colors and variegated colors and all that fun stuff. For this particular quilt, I'm going to use a a white off-white quilting thread is what I'm going to use on this is what's what I think right now anyway I have to wait till I get it in the frame and see what I can see because it's going to be hard difficult to see depending what color thread that you you quilt this with if you're free motion quilting I want something I can see where I've been at if, and, well, you'll see that when I do the video. I'm going to do it live. I'm sitting here thinking, I know I'm not going to get this done today, everybody, like I thought I would. Oh my God, it is. Yeah, I'm not done yet, though. That's for sure. But oh, I am going to make this a, a series every Sunday. I am going to go, I am going, I have to talk to Mike. Our anniversary is tomorrow, our wedding anniversary, and I don't know if he was wanting to go out to dinner tonight or if we're going to do it tomorrow, so I have to check with him before I sign off of here. That will dictate how late I do this to tonight. Tomorrow is our seven-year wedding anniversary. We got married on 12, 13, 14. Just seems like yesterday. You know, it's, you know, it's right <clears throat> after all of these years when you've, when you know you've married your best friend, you know what I'm saying? So this is another yet another line of fabric, another thing I've been sitting here thinking of while I've been sewing today, <coughs> is which one of these fabrics would I be willing to wear in public as a shirt? <laughs> and I'm not sure. This mineral fabric would really make a cool looking shirt. However, my favorite fab, I think my favorite, favorite one out of all of this, regardless of what it would be used for, is either the zebra, fat, the one with the zebras in it, or the, the pandas in it. But this is really a cool looking fabric as well. It would make an interesting looking garment. You know, everybody, you can also use quilting fabric to make garments with as well. 
it's a thing, it's a good thing. And then I'm going to go ahead, before I cut all those apart, I'm going to go ahead and get this first run of this step done. All of these two and a half inch strips have to have one of these on each side of it sewn on. So I'm going to go ahead and get that first step done as well. <laughs> and here a few more to go then we we can use that cool chain that cool cutting gizmo to to cut them apart. That, that is actually called, it is made by what is a company called the Gypsy Quilter. They make a lot of cool notions and tools for us as sewers. And their trademark is that beautiful purple color. Okay. And now we're going to get them all cut apart. This is how we cut our threads. Cut our threads, cut our threads. This is how we cut our threads all day long. Yes, so you now know why I was never like a professional singer or anything like that. <laughs> now, I will admit, still today, even like when I was a teenager, I still sing sometimes when I'm driving and I'm by myself so no one else can hear me. How many of y'all do that? Come on, be honest. Your favorite song is playing. You just have to sing along with it. You know what I'm saying. Okay. Oh, thank you, Judy. Yes, we planned that date for two years. 12, 13, 14. For two years, we planned that date. <laughs> it's easy to remember. <laughs> this here. Oh. There we go. Okay. Camera, you're getting getting a little lazy right there. There we go. Okay. Okay. So, next we need to finish this right here. We've almost got half of our blocks. When I get this one done, I will have 
half. Will it be half? Let me think here. Six, six, six. Uh, seven. Yes, I will have 25 of 49 blocks done when I finish these. And that is half. When I get this half done, I am going to set some of the blocks together. So you can see that process as well. And I really didn't plan on this being a two-part video for the PC. However, what I have decided to do is this. Once this session is over with, you will know how to set one of these together. <clears throat> because I'm going to show you how to do that. And the second session for this will be finishing up the piecing and then quilting the quilt in my long arm. That way it'll be a t the that will happen again next Sunday, which would be the 19th. Because I am going to I am going to cap this off at four hours, everybody. But by doing this, you've got the, the idea of how to piece it. OK, that's what today was about. To get it pieced. And since there's no borders on it, it's really easy. To, it's really easy to set together. I'm going to show you how to set the blocks together. And there's only one rule to follow when laying out your blocks, regardless of which fabric you have. The same fabric cannot be in an adjacent block. That's the only rule to the fabric. Okay. Next Sunday, I will be quilting this quilt. And since it's a big one, I'm going to have to do it on my big long arm. I will block out the name on it because it is not a baby lock long arm. I'll just creatively put some, um, if I remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But this, I don't have the two foot extension for my galat yet. And this is going to make, <coughs> this quilt top will be too large to put in the galat with the eight foot frame. You will, cannot do a king size quilt in it. This was a king size quilt. So I will have to use my other long arm to do this in. Okay.
that when we start next week's session for this quilt, you will see see it before it went into the long arm, the quilt top. <clears throat> so forth and so on. You know what I'm trying to say. I'll make sure you see it at all stages of completion. I've enjoyed today. And yeah, we're going to do this every Sunday for November, for um, December and January. I'll have to decide which kind of quilt I'm going to make in January next, eh? See, I'll have to put my thinking cap on for that. I hadn't really planned on showing, showing, doing the quilting of it live, but you know what? That'll be something new I haven't done yet. So I'm going to do that. We're going to quilt this quilt live on YouTube. going to limit these live sessions to four hours though quite honestly my voice won't last much longer than four hours is what I have discovered it is a stretch for me right now um, <clears throat> I mean if I could have got it done in six hours I would have knuckled on through but we're almost four hours into it now, and I'm just hitting the halfway point. Side note, <clears throat> at home, you could, you could do, this is a king size one to boot. So if I was not, I originally planned on not making it anyway, I was going to do a, a quilt that had 36 blocks in it. And that would be doable in the six hour time frame. But 49 blocks, unfortunately, is not. <laughs> I'd never done a time study on this one, this particular quilt pattern. You know, and I'll see something that I like, and I'll tweak it so I can call it my own. And this is really, quite honestly, a no-brainer. Using, using the pre-cut fabric scenario, of course, you could, use, you could use yardage to do this as well. Totally cool. As far as that goes, <clears throat> okay, and one more set, and then I get to press them. And then we're going to sew four of these blocks together. Okay. Let's see here. I've got to think how exactly I'm going to do this also.
because If it was eight blocks by eight blocks, I could do that in my head real easy. But since I'm doing seven by seven and it's odd, that means I have six, I have seven fabrics with three blocks of each one of those. Okay, is that right? No, six blocks. Seven fabrics with six blocks of each one fabric with seven blocks, okay? So the one that has seven blocks in it, I'm thinking of running as a diagonal line from corner to corner, is what I'm thinking. I haven't decided yet. Let me think. Because those seven blocks will kind of make a secondary element in the design of this quilt top. And that's something I just had to put my hand. I'm going to sit here and think about it and talk out loud about it. So let's see 49 blocks, seven by seven, seven times seven, 49. Yes. So it'll be seven wide, seven long. If I put one of those seven blocks in each of the four corners, that would leave three. I could run the seven blocks diagonal from one corner to the other. is really what I'm kind of thinking on doing. I'm kind of leaning towards that at the moment. Um, let's see with you like this. <laughs> Let me think. I think that's how I'm going to have to do it. Otherwise, Seven by seven, corner to corner, or, or, no, oh, wait a minute. I could also put one row either horizontally or vertically, because it's going to be the well, this one here is the one I have seven of that has the, the mint in it. This here is the block that I have seven of. And they are the panda blocks, too. <coughs> Let me think on that even yet another time now. Because <coughs> I have six blocks that will have that panda fabric as the, as the main fabric as well. <laughs> That's 13. Um, ba -bum -bum. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. <laughs> uh, hmm, let's see here. How do I want to do that? Seven, right? Then you have six and six. Do, 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 do. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to graph paper this out. I'm going to have to pull up, use electric quilt to figure this one out. Because I was first had planned on making like super duper scrappy. And now I've got it so planned out, back to OSD, OCD and being a perfectionist, dadgummit. But now I'm going to have to like 
use my computer program to finish the design so it'll look okay. Let me think. Do, 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 do. If I put those in the very center. Uh, ooh, wait a minute. Just the, I'm just going over these quilt block, block, these layouts in my head, everybody. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to press these. I'll be right back. Let's see here. I'm going to go over and press these. Let me think. How do I want to do this? These really turned out nice. These really worked well together. These two fabrics in the collection did. And one more block, and that'll all be pressed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that is half of my blocks for this quilt. There's 25 blocks is what I've got done so far. And let's see here. And I'm going to turn my microphone off for a moment, everybody. I have to go use the restroom.
Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Woohoo. Okay. So, let's see here. Um Oh, everybody, you're so funny. Awesome. I'm glad I'm not the only one that sings when I'm by myself. <laughs> you know, we all want to be, we all, in our mind, sometimes we all think we're rock stars or, or pop stars or whatever, whatever kind of music you like, or opera or whatever. Yes, but I think most everybody, if they're honest, will actually say, yes, when I'm alone and I know no one else can hear me, I sing and I, I sing and I think I'm really, really good and I should be on, on America's Got Talent or something. <laughs> but not really. <laughs> okay. And Rebecca, I don't have a long arm. Is it hard to quilt on the Altair? Well, Rebecca, I have a bunch of videos on how to quilt on the Altair using an embroidery hoop. So <clears throat> I would recommend that would be a good place for something for you to start. It's not that hard to quilt on the Altair or any sewing machine as far as that, that goes. But this would also be a great quilt to not even free motion or use the embroidery arm with. You could actually use the digital dual feed foot and do a lot of straight line quilting with it. Okay, so let's lay out some of these blocks because before I proceed any further, so the way this is going to work, everybody, I'm actually going to do this again next Sunday and we're going to quilt it. But I will. <clears throat> I will also, I'm going to do a second video on the piece scene to finish it up. Um, once I end this at 2 o'clock in 20 minutes, I'm going to end this one. But I will, <clears throat> off camera, I will finish piecing all the blocks. And then one day this coming week, I'll be back on here and I will notify everybody. Let's just figure that out right now. Let me think here. Can't Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm thinking. <laughs> um, ba -ba -bum -ba -bum. How about Wednesday? And I'll send out. I'll post that here on YouTube and in our face my Facebook group. Wednesday at noon, I'm going to do another session on this. Uh, noon Central Standard Time. And I will put that out there for everyone to see as well. But I will f actually have it then how to sew all of these blocks together. So basically, but I'm going to kind of explain that right now. So that if you're done, because of what I've done here because of what I've done trying to make this for a king size bed and doing what I've did, <laughs> I went away from it being scrappy to more planned, which was my bad, my mistake. However, it's all good. And what we're going to do though, what I'm going to do is this. Okay. So one thing I'm thinking of is putting all of these particular blocks Let's say right up here is my upper, the top left corner of the quilt. And then, me, I'm going to swap over to a different camera view here. Hold on. <coughs> so I want to be able to see my design wall here. Okay, there we go. So one thing I could do is set these 
from one corner, there will be seven rows of seven blocks. I'm, I'm, what I'm thinking of, leaning towards right now, is just putting them diagonally down through the middle of the quilt. <coughs> and then these would go in like maybe here. Okay. And then I put a different one. But this is what I'll be doing on camera on Wednesday, Wednesday at noon, next session for this one. I'll be doing, I will be plotting this out because I'll have all of the blocks done. And that's the only way to tell how it's really going to look <laughs> is to do it like that. Let's see here. When we go there, get my chair out of the way. I'll just set a few of these out. If you don't have a design wall, you can lay them out on the floor or on a bed. But it just really helps to be able to see it. And I, now that I've kind of seen it, that's what I'm going to do with mine. I'm going to put these mint colored blocks from the upper left corner to the bottom right corner for this quilt. Because this is the fabric that will be on the back of the quilt as well. That's just how I'm going to do it. I'm just not going to drive myself crazy thinking about that one any longer. That's how I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm just going to lay out. I'm going to fill up my wall so we just kind of get a, a different look at it. And this will give you a good idea of what I'm trying to do here in my my thought process. Let's also kind of give you a preview of what it'll kind of look like. Okay. And one more view. You won't see that down there though. It's okay. What this white stuff is, I'm sticking it to, that's just cotton quilt batting that I have up on top of foam board, and that's covering a big, a huge window behind this design wall is an eight foot tall window that goes to the front porch of this house. Okay, let's see here. Let me just need one more. One more. Which one is going up there? It doesn't really matter, Richard. <laughs> because I'll have to, once I get all the blocks done, I'll mix them up much better than this. But this will give you kind of an idea as to what, I'm, what I am doing here. Okay. Okay. Right there. But you can kind of see how those are going to... These over here will blend better because I'll have four, yet four more different blocks with these different centers in them to mix up better. But that's just four wide. So you can see, even four by four, it's going to make a pretty big quilt. So five, six by six would be approximately 82 by 82 inches 
my 7x7 seven seven blocks will be 95 by 95 inches for my finished quilt. Okay. And to sew them together, I'm not going to sew it together, but it's just basically, let's see here, move here to this camera. Because you, you will have to match seam lines doing this, which is okay. And this would be one that I will probably, that I'll pin together. As you can see, I just had to match up these two seam lines and those two seam lines right there and sew them together. Easy peasy. Okay. Yeah, I dig that. That's going to be a cool looking quilt. I am happy. <clears throat> Move some of this out of the way. Okay. <clears throat> but I will get those, the next two live YouTube live videos posted after I get off of here. So I'm going to be here on here next Wednesday, noon to four. And then next Sunday, we're going to do noon to four also, because that 10 a.m. was just a little bit early for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am not the morning person I used to be. That is what I have found that, um, that is what I have found that as I get older, I used to be, oh, I'm up at five o'clock, raring to go. Well, it's not that way anymore. <laughs> but yes, Debbie, yes, all of these are recorded. This one is being recorded as I speak right now, and it'll be available to rewatch here on my YouTube channel as many times as you want to. Yes, always. I record everything. Every video I've ever made, I have recorded. That camera just needs something pretty right there. So we'll just put the lemur. There we go. That looks better. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so before we sign off of here, are there any questions? Put it into the chat window if there's questions, and I will answer anything that I can. Okay. Been keeping a close eye on my phone with all the things that are going on with the weather and everything right now. Okay. Oh, you're welcome, Debbie. Okay. Yes, so I have three cameras programmed into my new stream deck I was talking about on Friday night. Here is only my face cam. Here is my, what I call my IP Evo camera. And then this is, oh, I didn't program that one. This is just my overhead view right here still working on that camera setup but this one is actually a montage of all three cameras <laughs> wonderful Marcia thank you thank you Beverly Debbie tonight today I've been sewing on the Altair on Wednesday I will be on the baby lock accomplish I think that could be fun well, it will be fun, and it's the accomplish is a straight stitch only machine, but it does 1500 stitches per minute. It sews way faster than any other baby lock machine that baby lock makes today. And it is really what I had I did it on the Altair because I have to have the Altair set up for first on Tuesday for sewing machines plus demos, and then I'll swap over to the accomplish from that. But yes, so that would be a great time. I'm going to finish piecing all the blocks on the Altair. And then Wednesday, I'm going to sew on the Accomplish. 
so I'm going to set all the blocks together on Wednesday. And then next Sunday, you can watch me quilt this, this big humongo quilt top in my long arm. <laughs> I hope that just made a lot of sense. I don't know. I'm rambling a little bit. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. This has been awesome. I've really enjoyed this. And thank you so much for tuning in. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. Because if you, the easiest way to support what I'm doing, both on Facebook and on YouTube, is to subscribe to this YouTube channel this YouTube channel because I do get a monthly check from YouTube as a percentage of advertising revenue generated from my channel. So the easiest way to support me, quite honestly, and it costs you nothing but your time, is to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and just watch my content because you, I, you are actually in a roundabout way, sending me a monthly check that way. <laughs> so I appreciate it. If you don't want to do any of that, that's fine too. I don't care. But a lot of people say, well, what can we do to support what you do? That's the easiest way to support me is just by watching my videos. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I will see you hopefully. Hopefully all of you will come back next Wednesday. 12 noon Central Standard Time. I'm going to get that all scheduled here in a moment. But if you subscribe to my channel and hit the notify button, you'll be notified whenever I make a post like that, that a, a, or when a new video is released or when an upcoming live stream has been scheduled by subscribing to my channel. Good day, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Bye now.